Hi, Phyllis here from southernfrugal.com. Today for lunch, uh, and we are having a late lunch, I'm going to try to make this meal in at least 30 minutes or less than 30 minutes. All right, first thing we're having, these are some of the uh, meatballs that I made a week or so ago, and I did a video on these, and they're frozen solid, but I'm going to make a little gravy and put these in the gravy. We're also going to have some steamed broccoli, and I'm going to save these broccoli uh, stalks, and I'm going to peel them for later. We'll be using them in a smoothie. Some of the rolls previously frozen, I'm going to cut those in half and put a little butter on them and toast the top part of them. And we're going to put some uh, carrots in with the broccoli when I steam that. And the main reason for this video is old-fashioned creamed potatoes, the ones where you actually peel the potato and slice it up, cook it, and then make creamed potatoes. Because I think a lot of people now maybe use the instant potatoes, and I'm guilty of that too. But uh, I wanted to make some uh, homemade creamed potatoes because I think maybe younger viewers don't quite know how to make them. So I'm going to show you the way my mother made them. Now she could put a meal on the table in 30 minutes. And now she worked really fast, and I'm not as fast as she is, but uh, we would always eat supper at 4.30, because that's my dad got home from work then, and uh, she would start the meal at 4 o'clock every day, just like clockwork, boom, boom. And uh, now we didn't uh, have ch fried chicken would have taken longer than that. We usually had that on Sunday. And, uh, but things like fried pork chops, uh, even stewed beef she would make in the pressure cooker. She could make that quick. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started on this meal. Now the first thing I'm going to do is peel the potatoes and get the carrots peeled and ready. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, have my water boiling to put the sweet potatoes, I mean not sweet potatoes, red potatoes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my potatoes into boiling water after I get them peeled. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that burner on and get that water up to boiling. I'm going to also turn the burner on under my little vegetable steamer uh, ready for the broccoli. And I'm also turning the burner on that I'm going to make the gravy in. Uh, this little skillet and I've got uh, maybe two tablespoons of oil and about two tablespoons of just plain flour. And so we're going to be doing all this at one time. All right, so I'm going to be back as soon as I get these potatoes ready to go in the water. We'll be back. And I've got the potatoes peeled, the carrots are peeled, and the potatoes are sliced. Now, the main focus of this video, of course, is going to be on the uh, really old-fashioned cream potatoes. That's how thick I slice them, because I want them to be done in 20 minutes or less. Now, I'm fixing more than uh, we're going to eat today because I want enough cream potatoes left to make some uh, potato pancakes. All right, so now my gravy has already browned my flour for my gravy. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one cup of water and I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of teriyaki to that to get that going. A couple of tablespoons. And then my um, uh, little meatballs are, of course, <laughs> still frozen hard as a rock, so I'm going to go ahead and dump the water in for the gravy. That's one cup of water, so I'm using I might have to add a little more water later. Let me see, let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to let this sort of come up to a boil. Now, while this is happening, I'm going to go ahead and slice my carrots. So, We'll be right back. Now, by the way, my water's already boiling for the broccoli and the carrots, so we'll be right back. Okay, I have got my carrots sliced up, and I did slice them up, you know, kind of the way they do in uh, Chinese restaurants, kind of at an angle. And I'm going to put those in my little steamer pot first, because it takes those a little bit longer than it does the broccoli. All right, now my potatoes are at a good, heavy, rolling boil over there and uh, those are what will take the longest so I'm going to go ahead now and put my little meatballs 
and these are really kind of like a small little hamburger patty, really. But these, I, I did a video on these and put them in spaghetti. Oh, I, I think it's a week and a half ago, maybe. But anyway, they're going to go right down in this gravy. And I've got my gravy on low now because it's already boiled and thickened up a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and put those little uh, meatball type patties in. And now we're ready to cut up the broccoli. Now, what I'm going to do, here's my broccoli. And I put it in a little cup of water when I get it and I cut off that end of the stem that's kind of dried up a little bit and put them in water kind of to refresh them a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and cook all of this broccoli uh, to go with the, in with the carrots. And I'm just going to cook the top of the broccoli those little florets I'm just going to cut all around there. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're going to use these stalks in smoothies. So I'm going to save that. And what I'll do is peel off this outer skin here. And we'll uh, at least have one of them, maybe two, in a smoothie tomorrow. All right, so I'm going to get the rest of these and go ahead and cut them off now. There will be enough broccoli here uh, for us to have broccoli and carrots for tomorrow, too. All right. Same. We'll save that. I've got one more here. All right. Now my carrots have already started steaming, but I'm still going to give them uh, just a couple of minutes. There they are, back on the back. Sorry about the jiggling. Some will give those a couple of minutes and let them cook just a little bit more before I put the broccoli in because that won't just take it a couple of minutes. So in the meantime, I'm going to cut these uh, broccoli up into sort of similar little florets. All right, so my gravy's boiling. I am going to add just a touch more water to this gravy because I don't like really thick gravy. My potatoes are coming right along, and so we'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and slice those rolls in two and get them ready for the little toaster oven. We'll be back. Okay, my carrots are almost really done now, so I'm going to go ahead and add my broccoli. I'm just going to kind of dump that in on top of those carrots. And just let this steam on for three or four minutes, and that should be ready. All right, in the meantime, it looks like my potatoes are done. Now, the way you check those potatoes, let me get you in the picture here. There we go. The way you check these potatoes, sorry about all the jiggling. I'm my only cameraman. All right, I just take a knife and, you know, see if the potato, see if I can stick the knife in it. And I can, so they're done. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and drain these in the sink just using the lid. So I'll be right back. I'll let y'all watch the meat while I'm gone. There you go. I'll be right back. potatoes all drained and I just used the lid like this to pour out the water and now I did add a little salt while I was cooking the potatoes not much but a little bit I'll put my meat on that back burner and cut that burner off now to these potatoes I'm going to add about three tablespoons of butter right in the top there excuse me all right now we're ready to mash these little potatoes up. So let me turn this down. All right. Potato masher. Just start mashing them with that butter in there. Now some people use a mixer for this, but then that would be like whipped potatoes. And this is mashed potatoes. And this is exactly how my mother and my grandmother fixed them. Just mash them all up. Now you want to make sure that the potatoes were cooked completely done. You don't want them firm. You want them kind of falling apart. And that takes about 20 minutes if you've sliced them. You know, sort of, uh, I'd say uh, no more than a quarter of an inch and maybe less thick. Now see how they all 
get mashed up. Doesn't take much. All right, so when our butter's all melted, put your potato masher down in cold water and that uh, potatoes will come right off of it. Okay, now, I've slipped that off that burner because that burner was really too hot. What I'm going to do is put a little salt in them. Now, I did a little bit of salt while they were cooking. All right, now we need some milk in these. Half and half really makes better cream potatoes. But I've only got a little bit in here, so I'm going to pour what I've got left in there and see how that works. All right, so I'm just going to stir that around. Now my burner is still sort of warm, so I'm going to push it back on this burner just to be able to keep them warm. All right, now that amount looks like about enough. I'm going to put just a little more actual just whole milk in there, just a little bit. So I'd say altogether that's maybe one third of a cup of uh, milk, cream, or half and half, whatever you've got. All right. Now there's the consistency of them. Far superior to instant potatoes, in my opinion. Far superior. All right, now because this burner is still warm, I'm just going to leave them sitting there. And I'm going to put the lid back on, but I'm not going to put it all the way on because you want any steam to escape. You don't want steam accumulating on your lid. All right, now let's have a look at the broccoli. All right, it's coming along. See how it's turned that bright, bright green? So we're going to let it cook a couple more minutes there. And my uh, little uh, neat balls have, of course, completely thawed out now. And I did, uh, I think I mentioned this, but I did add a little more water to that gravy because I don't like really thick gravy. Now, I didn't put any salt in it because I used the teriyaki and it's plenty salty. All right, so now all I've got to do is put these rolls in a little toaster oven and I put a little slab of butter on each one. I'm going to toast these and I think we'll be ready to eat. So we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, everything's ready. There's the little uh, meatballs with the gravy. And the cream potatoes, of course, are ready. And the broccoli and the uh, carrots are ready. Now, it doesn't take long at all for the broccoli. Uh, once you have gotten the uh, carrots in there and let them cook or steam for just a little while. All right, we're just waiting on those rolls. So this took exactly 29 minutes and if you count the distance or the time for the rolls another couple of minutes so I'd say certainly no more than 31 minutes. All right I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this stuff on the plates and uh, we've already got the tea fixed. I even took the peelings out to the compost uh, bucket out on the porch. All right so we'll be back in a minute after I get this dished up. Okay here's the meal with the homemade old-fashioned cream potatoes. I put a little gravy on there. Everything of course is steaming hot. There are the two meatballs with the gravy and these are rolls that I had uh, previously made. They were frozen. I just sliced them in two and put butter on them, put them in the toaster. There's the broccoli and the carrots. Now I'll have to tell you I don't put any salt, butter, or anything on the broccoli and carrots because most of the time when you have a vegetable that's got a really strong taste no one knows you didn't put salt on it, really. All right, there are the rolls. All right, there's our iced tea. All right, main uh, reason I did the video was because of the cream potatoes, old-fashioned cream potatoes like my mother and grandmother made. All right, we will see you all next time.